take this. What'd I miss? Four to three, last five seconds, winning goal scored by Thomas Broderick! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> $3.6 million in damages. Losing butt kicked by Thomas Broderick's old man. 3.6? We get, we get a quarter of that? Oh my God, Oh my God. Oh my God. <sighs> we made it, Bats. We finally made it. <sighs> and we had, finally. For years, we'd worked ourselves to the bone. Dan, first as a medical student, then as a law student, and finally as an attorney. And me, well, besides raising our four children, I'd done everything from babysitting, to selling housewares, to teaching elementary school during those lean years. And finally, when the 80s arrived, so did we. Our lifestyle became downright opulent. We joined two country clubs, bought a ski condo in Colorado and a boat in La Jolla. To put it mildly, we were euphoric. We were celebrating, literally celebrating. Let me fix your tie, Colonel Butler. <laughs> you think I should have bought that can we saw today? Oh, honey, if you were any more decked out, they'd build a theme park around you. Now, can we go before my dress goes out of style? Gentlemen, start your cameras. We're coming. <laughs> Here we go. Oh. OK. You look beautiful, Mom. Thank you, darling. Uh, you too, Dad. OK, you guys smile. One, two, three. Great. <laughs> no more pictures, I'm sorry. That's absolutely the last one. Oh. Mrs. Roderick has to leave. Good night, Good night, Good night. Good night. Daddy. Good night. Charming. <laughs> Stunner of a gal. You know, when you travel with a guy in a cape, you gotta look stunning. <laughs> Damn right. And you do, Beth. Thank you. Thank you. I think we should get into this. Mm -hmm. See you in a bit. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Dan, I've been hearing about your impressive victory. Ah, well, I owe it entirely to your husband. Oh, bull. All I did was recommend you for the job. Exactly. For which, everybody knows you put your reputation on the line. Made me work just a little harder. Well, Dan, you deserved it. You're a hell of a litigator. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Betty and I would like very much for both of you to uh, join us in Paris on me. What? <gasps> Dan, no, we couldn't. Too late. Prepaid. No money back. We leave Thursday. Thursday. Dan, that's my manicure day, you know that. <laughs> well, I think it sounds like a lot of fun. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Come on, Bess, this one's ours. <laughs> You want to go to Paris? Would have been nice if you told me. What? You make these grand gestures. You act like royalty or something. It's, it's irritating as hell. Wrong, Betts. That's the reason you married me. Okay. Let me make it really simple for you, okay? Yeah, furnish the documents that I requested before I left for Paris, or uh, I extend the suit against Dr. Cross to include the hospital. It's your choice. What? Well, look, I'll tell you something. No, I never get after 5 o'clock. Bye-bye. Alice? Alice? She never left. She never left. Alice? Listen. 
need this stuff finished by uh, lunch tomorrow. If you have any questions, I'll be in at 7.30. Hey, I'm just coming hey. to talk to you. I'm doing on the run, I'm like, I haven't seen you since the Blackstone Ball, and I wanted to give you an update. I moved out last night. Susan and I are officially split. Jeez, Kevin, sorry. I thought you guys might be able to pull it back together. <sighs> Too far gone, Danny boy. You want to grab a beer? Oh, I would. You know I would, but I, I got Grant's Cub Scout group in the backyard tonight. Oh, you got to teach him how to light a fire by rubbing a doctor's legs together. Well, that's in very poor taste. I like that. Yeah. Oh, okay, guys. Stand hurt. Very impressive. You make me proud. Okay, where were we? Uh, all right. This is a steak. It's not the kind of steak you put ketchup on. It's the kind of steak that holds up your tent. Take your mallet. Take your steak. Dan, Ron Phillips is on the phone. Oh, jeez. Okay, time out, guys. I'll be right back. Can you cover with me for a second? He's, he's flying to testify on Monday. He's probably got the jitters. Yeah, how long are you going to be? Well, it's already 11 back there. How long can he talk? Okay, 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 okay. Where were you before uh, Captain Broderick so rapidly departed? Run. Hey. No, 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 no. Look, it's, no, it's no problem at all. Ask away. I'm all ears. Yeah. The third man went to stay at the haunted house, and he was terrified that the coffin was going to come and get him too, because it got the other two guys. He said, "I will be courageous," and he went to bed. As soon as he was asleep, he was awakened by the thump, thump, thump on the third floor. The thump, thump, thump on the second floor. Thump, thump, thump on the first floor. Jeffrey, your mother's here. Hi. Thanks, Betty. Hi, Mom. Hi, boys. Hi. Bye, Eva. Bye-bye. Is that still on the phone? I'm sorry, honey. He had a client. He always has a client. Well, I'll make sure he comes up and talks to him before we go to bed. Okay. <laughs> Are you making this up, Ron? <laughs> that makes my sides hurt. <laughs> How was Seattle? How is it ever? Rainy, damp. The contractors ever show? Not till I threatened them. With what? <laughs> My wrath and your reputation. There's a combo. So? So the foundation cracks worse than we thought. Worse than you thought. I always said it was bad. You want to hear this? Sure, sure. They can't work around us. We have to move out while they fix it. Come on. Well, calm down. I've already taken care of it. I Spent about a thousand hours with a thousand realtors this week. Therefore, I actually have some pretty decent rentals for you to see starting tomorrow. Hmm. Little present. Can't go to a St. Patrick's Day party without one. You're one of a kind, Betsy, you know that? Listen up, everybody, listen up. I actually memorized it this year. You ready for this? <clears throat> <laughs> Have you ever been to Ireland where the rolling hills are green? Oh, sure, and it's the fairest land that ever yet was seen. And though those hills of Ireland may be very far away, they're close to every Irish heart, no matter what the day. 
Who's that? That is our new receptionist. Wow. She is really, uh... Hmm. So, uh, Mr. Workaholic actually appreciates women after all. Well, not just any woman, but, uh, that woman, yeah. Yeah. I have lots of friends who are real pretty. One's a former Miss America. I mean, she gets out of the shower beautiful. But I've never heard Dan say, wow, she's pretty about anybody. And then Kevin walked in with his new trophy. Come on, Betts, the lift line's not getting any shorter. I wasn't the one who couldn't find his gloves. <laughs> got him now, so let's get going. Well, you've got it now, because I found it for you, so get off my back. Hey, folks, I hate those long lift lines. Can we hustle it up? OK, Larry, I'll be right there. The Broderick man has spoken. Let the seas part. Don't start that Broderick man crap again, Betts, OK? Oh, OK, you're the boss. I'm just the hired hand. Well, it pays well enough. Not as well as being your brother. What does that mean? Did you think I wouldn't notice you keep lending him money? What are you talking about? We make investments together. He makes more money than I do. Oh, are you proud of that? Come on. All the money you lend him, every time he asks, your own family could be living like aristocrats. My own family does live like aristocrats because I bust my butt 100 hours a week. Oh, oh, it's all you. That's right. I'm just along for the ride. God, why am I even here? Why don't I leave? Why don't we just get a divorce? You can't even go on a vacation, can you? Without bringing it all down with your endless, petty nonsense. Petty? Petty, it's our money that you're investing oh, yeah, with it's him. It's our money that I made. That you made? Well, I busted my butt to raise our four kids. You ready yet? Do I look ready? Come on. All set? Where is... Oh, uh, she's not going to be joining us. She'll probably pout for a couple hours and then ski the pants off the rest of us all day long. Oh, no, Dad's have a way of money. See you between 6 and 8. Okay, yeah, don't go to the wrong house, all right? Bye. Bye, Daddy. Bye-bye. Go, 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 go. Uh, she's the boss. Bye. Hi, uh, boxes with the blue tape going on the bottom, the red tape going on top. You want some coffee? I just wanted to thank you for pitching in the way you have the last couple of weeks. When Alice told me how long she was going to be out, I figured I was in big trouble, but you saved us. Gave me a chance to do something besides answer phones. Which brings me to my next point. You sound like a lawyer. <laughs> it's become pretty obvious to me lately that I'm going to need a full-time assistant, so if you're interested in joining the team, the job's yours. You got yourself a deal. Always lived here. Well, the upstairs and the kids' room still look like, look like a cyclone went through them, but 
Well, you taste my real roast. Ah, oh, I was in college. I look so good in these, I could have gotten arrested. Nowadays, I still get arrested, but for the wrong reasons. <laughs> they will let anyone shop in here. Hi. Susan, <laughs> hi. How are you? Mm, not great. Kevin actually filed for a divorce. Oh, Susan. Oh, my God, I'm, s I'm sorry. I thought, I thought maybe he was just going through a phase. Are you all right? Uh, truthfully, <laughs> I've never been better in some ways. But in others, <laughs> I'm a complete basket case. <laughs> but um, shopping helps. Anyway, I got to go. So um, call me. Yes. What is with Kevin? What is with all of them? I mean, Dan's even gone out and hired some new airhead assistant. Well, they all hire airheads at some point. Gosh, Marge, what's a nice girl to do? I'm off now, Lydia. You can get the kids bathed and dressed and ready for dinner by 7. Bye. I'm here for Dan. Are you a client? I'm his wife. Oh, forgive me. I, I just started. Anyway, they're out. They? Last time I looked, I just had one husband. No, he and Linda, they went to lunch. It's his birthday today? Really? Oh, right. Of course. Uh, sorry. I'll wait in here. How was lunch? Oh. No. Why? Oh, because I made a special birthday dinner, roast beef, just like you requested. Oh, well, that's terrific. Thanks. To make things extra special, I traipsed downtown with a bottle of champagne so we could watch the sun go down together. But you weren't there. Why didn't you call or something? You know, I had to move some things around. You bastard. Who goes to lunch for seven hours? And, and with a 19-year-old whore to boot? Are you nuts? I've been in a deposition since 1.30, and Linda was... I don't even know where Linda was. You're gonna stand here and lie to my face. What am I, some client? Some judge? Some gullible half-assed jury? You think you could convince me that black is white? Admit it, Dan, you are sleeping with her. Take this inside. Why? What? Am I shouting? Am I embarrassing you? Bull, I am right, is what I am. Oh, come on, Bets! You want to talk out here? Fine. I swear to you, I'm not having an affair with Linda. Or anybody else. Liar, liar, pants on fire. What are you
Who cares? I don't know, Dan. I mean, burning your clothes? <laughs> That's Betty. A little extreme, no? I can afford new clothes. I don't think that's what I meant. Well, then what did you mean? Look, when Betty got out of hand, I get out of hand. It's par for the course. You should pardon the expression. Yeah, and this is a woman who's been telling you she wants a divorce since your honeymoon. Doesn't that worry you? Right now, I'm more worried about sinking this putt. Mind if we drop the subject? Why would somebody retain us as counsel and then go off and do whatever the hell he wants to? He's an even bigger obstacle in this case than the hospital board. <laughs> yeah, good point. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Oh, uh, Linda, is there any news on the Corvette? Well, they've had seven weeks to find one. What, is red such an unusual color? I... You know what? No, don't bother. Call the jerks and tell them to stop it. Really. Enough is enough. Uh, listen, I'm under orders to resume my vacation. Yeah. Well, thanks for everything. You're doing a great job. I can, yeah, I can actually relax of a fashion. I will. Okay, you take care now. I feel that you have a frivolous case here, and I just don't want to be involved with it. Well, you're certainly entitled to your feelings, sir. Want some good news? Yeah, sure. What do you got? How much do you still want that red Corvette you told me to tell them to stuff? What do you mean? Well, I did my own little research project, and lo and behold, the exact car you specified is, in fact, sitting at a dealership waiting for you to purchase it, provided you're still interested. Provided I'm still interested. Very funny. When can I pick it up? My clothes at six. You better leave now. Now it's only one fifteen. Where is this place? Malibu. It's fantastic. Thanks. Anytime. Hey, you did all the work on this. Uh, I go for a ride in my new car. Only if you put the top down. <laughs> Finally found one. Well, actually, I didn't. Uh, I mean, I didn't, didn't think I would, but there it is. Oh, well, maybe this will help. Help? Help you feel better. I know you're not happy, Dan. I don't know why exactly. Maybe it's me. Maybe not. I don't know. I hope this helps. the lights on your way out. Have you got a minute for me? Uh, sure, what's up? I have been very loyal and hardworking since I came here, is that right? Alice, I, I don't think it's the best time to talk about a raise. I don't want a raise. I want a little respect. Excuse me? Mr. Broderick, that woman has been here six months and already makes more money than I do, than any of us do. She has an office the size of, well, you know what she has. 
I don't think you can treat people this way. Hold on a second. First of all, Linda's doing entirely different things from what you do. I know. She can't type. Well, she's a legal assistant, not a secretary. She doesn't have to type. And as far as the office goes, she needs the privacy because she spends a good deal of time on the phone to clients on my behalf so that I can spend time finding new clients so that we can all prosper. Does that make sense? Of course. Good luck to both of you. Are you quitting? You really ought to think about how you treat people, Mr. Broderick. All, all people, that is, not just the ones you think are special. This is great, Mom. How'd you ever know to find one of these? Katie, your mom's not as old as you think. I guess not. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Dad. Your father's as old as you think. Stepdad. I'll say. Thank you. I know it's not the exact one you said you, you liked, but I don't know. I, I, I thought this would be more of a surprise. And, uh, you know, uh, I actually kind of like this one better. You liked it better? Well, I mean. I, you mean you liked it better? And that's what counts, really. I mean, that's what it's all about. You make it, you spend it on what you want. Oh, jeez, Pat. It's not like it cost any less. Oh, exactly! So why not get me what I want? You certainly got what you wanted, even though you had to spend an extra seven grand to get it when you wanted it. Could you guys just cool it? It's Christmas. Your mom wants to behave like a spoiled brat. Let's let her. What kind of person gets his wife a Christmas present she doesn't even want? For, so that makes it a piece of crap. more often, Dan. That's... I thought this would be a good place for us to have this. This? This meeting. I know this was a meeting. I thought this was lunch. I have some things I think we should discuss. We sleep in the same bed. We use the same bathroom. I had to get all dressed up and come down here just to discuss something. Do you stand there, romantic? Um, how shall I I didn't want to have this talk at home. This way we can't throw things at each other. And why, pray tell, will we do that? That's... That's no secret that things haven't been going so well for us of late. In some ways, maybe they never have. It's just gotten to the point where it's not healthy for us or for the kids if we're living in the same house, so. So I'm, uh, I'm gonna move out for a while. For a while? Just until. I don't really know for how long. Until you feel better about the marriage. Until you've gotten over this turning 40 crap. 
Oh, so you've made it with your secretary so many times you've gotten it out of your system? That's great. That's great. It's impossible to have a normal conversation with you. You call it normal, busting up a 16-year marriage over, over lunch? Damn, could you pull this? I gave you my life. I, I, I gave you your life. You would still be cleaning up vomit on the emergency room floor if it weren't for me. If, if, if I hadn't raised our children, held down five jobs, and, and provided a home for you. Do you think you could have done this by yourself? I really don't know. Maybe not. But it's not working now, Bets. You know that. You criticize whatever I do or say. You're clearly not happy. Why would you want me to stay? Oh, because you owe me. I'm moving back to the Coral Reef house. That can work around me. In the meantime, you meantime, can... you can finish this meeting by yourself, since you are the one and only person on this earth you care about. Okay, I got it. up in San Francisco to trial all day. I, I almost didn't come back tonight. How did she know I'd be here? Oh, come on, let's go inside. You okay? You're not cold? Mm -hmm. See, I have this little two-step plan. First, I've been dropping the kids off at his house one by one to live with him. You're kidding. No, let Mr. Businessman see what it means to actually raise a family, not just have his wife do it. And secondly, a new house with an ocean view. Voila. Oh, great. Dan may be momentarily attracted to this little girl, but ultimately what turns him on his status. You know, best address, best clothes, best parties. I'm the only one who can make that happen for him. Make him special, respectable. He'll come back. OK, I'll fax everything to you first thing Monday morning. And meanwhile, if you have any questions at all, just get in touch with Linda. She's researched everything pretty thoroughly. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. OK, 5.30. Enough time to grab a bite to eat and get back to the office. Didn't you start at 7 this morning? So sue me, I came in late. <laughs> Can I uh, buy you some dinner before you go home? Sure. Well, for a stuffy malpractice attorney, you're doing OK. Yeah? What'd you expect? I expected you to go back to work like you planned. Me too. Well, I'm glad you didn't. And thanks for a wonderful dinner, Dan. Really. Thank you for all your advice. <laughs> I didn't give you any. I just listened. Really? <laughs> Around 40 is when you reap the benefits of your 20s and 30s. It's supposed to be the best time, when you're young enough to still have fun and enjoy the money. It's what I've been living for my whole life.
and I'm not ruining your project. You are so mean. No, I'm not. I'm not. Tommy, cut it out. Room. It's his, all right? Oh, yeah. Mom, what are you doing here? I thought I'd come see how my children were. Tommy, leave him alone. Grant, what is this? Did you like that? I'm gonna kiss, please. Hi, Mom. I missed you. I missed you. Dad doesn't have potato chips or anything. He doesn't. Well, I think I have a couple bags in the car. Tommy, why don't you go get them? Okay. Let's see what else he doesn't have. Oh, wow. That's your father. Unbelievable. I was supposed to pick up some things at the store yesterday. I got a little sidetracked. Man will never measure up. He's a lawyer, not a parent. Oh, what is this mess? Dad brought it home from the office. His friend Linda made it for us. Is that so? I'm home. Hey, big guy. Hi, Dad. Um, dinner will be ready in about five minutes, okay? Great. I'm going to go up and change. I'll be right down. Sure. Dad? Yeah? Where's Yugoslavia? In the Atlas. Uh, Dad? Hey, sweetie, how'd that math test go? Elizabeth Broderick. Thank you. Ah! Oh. I didn't use that umbrella to impale him. Mrs. Broderick. Betty. Everyone calls me Betty, except him. He calls me Betts. That's cute, isn't it? If we're going to try and get you an equitable settlement, I'd suggest you consider more appropriate behavior in the future. Meaning? Meaning no more umbrellas through the window. 
there is now a restraining order preventing you from going within 100 yards of the house. A restraining order is a very serious thing. Yeah, I know, but so are four kids and 16 years together. Don't preach to me. I'm just saying that you need to do all you can to try to help balance the situation. All I want to know is if we can nail this guy in court. <sighs> Mrs. Broderick. Betty, you don't catch on real quickly, do you? We'll do the best we can. So that's it? I beg your pardon? We just don't sound really excited. Dan Broderick is a shark. He is the best. You're not excited, we're dead. I know his reputation very well. You're just running scared already. You know what? I have a feeling I am not the best choice of an attorney for you. You know what? I think you're right. Thank you for your time. Mrs. Br Betty. You're not the first woman whose husband ever left her. And you won't be the last. I'd advise you to try and keep your cool. Too late. Look, Betsy's gonna be here any minute to meet with us. Are you sure this guy's serious? Oh, absolutely. He's already qualified for the loan. Great. Hi, Betty. Hi, Lois. Good news, I found a buyer for the house. What's the offer? Three and a quarter. We think it's extremely reasonable. We? Dan and I. How cozy. I beg your pardon. I'm sorry, would you excuse us for a minute? Get your hands off me. I think the offer stinks. I want a million. That's it. Got it? That's. I bought you a house. I'm buying myself a house. Now, I can't afford to carry three mortgages. We gotta get rid of this place now. You're the one who came up with a 340 figure in the first place. What's the matter with you? This is just a little bit below that. Don't whine. It does not become you. Of course, now there is this regression into puberty. The issue at hand... The issue at hand is you become such a bad joke. I mean, look at you. You are the cover of Midlife Crisis magazine. You've got your red Corvette, you've got your, your teenage secretary, you're living alone, all of it. Three and a quarter is a good price. We're taking it. A million, Danny boy. Period. End of conversation. And the last thing I ever expected was to fall in love with him. Why? Well... Dan's not the kind of guy you think of as being romantic, but when I'm with him, he just makes life seem like some great old movie where everything's gonna work out okay. Hey, I found this great house in Marston Hills. Linda loves it. You ought to buy it. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, have you sold Coral Reef yet? Uh, Betty's saying she wants a million bucks for it. You believe that? I mean, I mean, she knows it's not worth a third of it, but. I don't know, I guess it's her way of hanging on. Meanwhile, I'm paying through the nose. You'll just have to live with it. No, I won't. Remember a little procedure called Eliza? I can get a court to grant me permission to sell if I can show she's withholding her consent unreasonably. unreasonably. So, Tuesday at 9, I go before Judge Donnelly. She'll contest it? Yep. She can do whatever she wants. She won't know what hit her. I'll tell you why, because it's a holiday. You know, families are supposed to be together. Oh, get off it, Dad. We're not together anyway. What's a difference if I'm here or not? Look, there's a big difference. I want you here for dinner. You can see this guy another time. Well, you've got your date. Why can't I have mine? Because I want you here with us, not out running around. Well, that's just too bad, because I'm going out with him no matter what you say. Great, great. Then don't come home. Fine, Dad. I won't. I'm sure Mom will be glad to see me. Here. 
Can I stay here tonight? Oh, well, yes, of course. Oh, happy Thanksgiving, honey. Oh. Are you hungry? I've got some leftover turkey. We ate. Oh, um, Kate, I I'd like you to meet my friend, Jerry. Jerry, this is my daughter, Kate. I've heard a lot about you. Wish I could say the same. The man's a lawyer. I'm a prospective client. What's the problem? Well, I bet he'd return my call if my name were Dan Broderick. Thanks, no thanks. Come on, guys. I don't want you to be late for practice. No, 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 that's all right. Let's let it go. We gotta get out of here. All right, nobody's around to answer the phone right now, but if you leave a message, someone... Dad, I forgot the ball. Thanks. You guys go get in the car. I'll get it. Anybody there? Pick up. I know you're there. Oh, I hope you're happy, you rotten son of a bitch. The entire San Diego legal community is shutting me out. Nobody wants to go up against Dan Broderick. Well, I'll get a lawyer from L.A. I have names up there, too, pal. Why don't you pick up? Why don't you ever call me back, Dan? You think you can just ignore me? You can't, you hear me? I will not be ignored. No doubt about it. You make the best boat salmon in Southern California. Well, key's not to overdo it. You are an artist, Betty. No, not really. You know, when, I'm, when I was in Aspen, I got the recipe from this old Argentinian couple. Excuse me, Mrs. Roderick. Mr. Conway's on the phone. My high-priced L.A. lawyer. Excuse me. Never stopped. Hello? Yes, I understand. Thank you. Um, please forgive me. I need to go um, discuss something with Dan. I'll be right back. <laughs> You're going over there? I have no choice. He won't take my calls anymore. Don't worry, it won't take long. Uh, look, Jerry, can you and Susan look after things till I get back? Well, sure. You okay? Oh, yeah, I'm used to this. He won't talk to me. I had to come. He sold the house out from under me. I know, Mom, but if you're caught violating the restraining order again, they'll arrest you. I don't care. Well, we do. Without my consent, my house, mine. You told me a hundred times how much you hated that house. You said it had too many painful memories. Well, maybe so, but they were my memories. You had no it's right. It's a fide legal procedure, Betts, and you've known about it for weeks. But well, that doesn't make it right. So, go get your share. End of conversation. Don't walk away from me. I'll talk to my lawyer. He won't talk to me. No one will talk to me. I think you two better come in the house right now. Stay inside. You come upstairs and keep an eye on your brothers. What are you doing? You! You! Are you deserve Mom! Mom! Stop it, Mom! Pete! Stop it! Pete! Stop it! 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 Stop
doing? Make it up. What are you? Oh, God, what are you doing? Don't need you. Okay, ma'am, calm down. Oh. Officer, I'm Dan Broderick. There's a restraining order in effect. That's my ex-wife. She just drove her car into the front of my house. Go of you, Nazi. You think you are? I think I'm the guy that's going to take you downtown. Unless you don't want to press charges. I mean, it's up to you. Up to him? Who is he, your boss? Are they all on the same side? Take her. Look at this, girls. Women have no power in America. We're going to have to get the old boy establishment of which your father is king. Okay, no! There's nothing else I can do. I'm sorry. We both wanted the same things. We were both smart. We were both funny. We were a credit to each other. We were, we were Leave It to Beaver. It may sound funny, but that's what we were. Everything we had was who I was. And one day, he, he walked. He, he just walked away with it. I wasn't Mrs. Anybody anymore. He erased the memory. He erased the marriage. He erased me. I'd do it again. Only I'd do it better. I was so mad. He, he had he'd just stolen everything from me. Up to that point, he'd stolen my furniture, my kids. My clothes, my jewelry. Oh, only I, I knew I still owned half that house. I, I just didn't understand how that could be taken from me. Dan likes to say that I have the foulest mouth in the world. <laughs> you bet I do. I've practiced. Mommy, okay? Merry Christmas, baby. Mom, you can't just keep coming in here like this. Is there anything under here for me? Is there? Sure, Mom. Of course there is, but it's not Christmas yet, and... Ooh. Is this one for me? Huh? Mom, Mom, stop that. What about this? Is this for me? 
Leave me alone! I want to have Christmas too. He doesn't get to take Christmas from me. Put that down! Put that down! Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Katie. Katie, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please, I didn't mean to hurt you. Mommy wouldn't hurt you. That was my present for you. It was for you. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. I just love you all so much. We were in and out of courts forever as I fought for my rights. With all due respect, Your Honor, Mrs. Broderick has consistently violated any number of restraining orders and clearly cannot be trusted. Oh, for God's sakes, even child molesters get visitation rights. What is this, Mother Russia? Mrs. Broderick, would you mind? Please, I'm trying to help. But you're not trying right. The worst thing is the way he forcibly separated my children from me, sometimes with the help of so-called experts that, in fact, he'd hired. Well, with all that's gone on, these children need to remain in a stable environment. And in my opinion, Mrs. Broderick does not provide any type of stable environment. Thank you, Dr. Miller. I was forced into a legal system that Dan Broderick controlled. Everything was backwards, especially the money. Here was a man who was literally spending a fortune on himself now that he'd made it, while I was expected to exist on what he threw my way. Ultimately, Dan got the final divorce decree on a day that I wasn't even present. I got no custody, no visitation rights. Are you certain Mrs. Broderick was served? Yes, sir, she has been personally, in as much as she has no attorney of record at this time. OK, folks, end of the line. The dissolution is granted. Mr. Broderick, consider yourself divorced. La Jolla Cove Galleries. Oh, yes, Betty. Well, I, I've been leaving messages all week. You and Carl been out of town? Well, no, not exactly. It's just been one of those weeks. Oh, well, no matter. As I said in your machine, uh, today's the day. The day? Yeah. Where do you want to go for lunch? I'll pick you up. I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to make it this time. Marge, it's tradition. It's your birthday. Betty, we've been socializing with Dan and Linda and just wouldn't be appropriate for us to see you right now. I'm sorry. I hope you understand. Perfectly. Hi. No one's able to answer the phone right now, but if you leave a message, someone will call you back. Thanks. Oh, sweet. One who taught her how to talk. So, Dan, I guess you weren't satisfied with wrecking me over the coals financially. Now you have to poison my social life as well. Why a child whore, Dan? <sighs> and what is it about the bitch that turns you on? It's certainly not her intellect. She's a moron. <laughs> She's an, an oversexed, syphilitic piece of poor white trash. You with the slut now, Dan? Probably, huh? Mommy, it's me, Grant. Hi, Grant. Hi, sweetheart. How's my baby boy? Are, are they treating you all right? Yeah, Mom, but... Because if they're not, you could come live with me. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, Mom, but you've got to stop leaving messages like this all the time. It, it makes me feel funny when you say all that stuff about Linda and Daddy. Like, embarrassing stuff. Sweetheart, there's worse things in life than being embarrassed. And I didn't cause this. Your daddy did. But, Mom, all you care about is your stupid money and getting rid of Linda. And you're always mad and everything. You never say anything. Nice anymore. Nice? Who's not nice? Your father, that's who. Your father dumped your mommy for a 12-year-old. That's nice? You little traitor. Who put you up to this? The slot or the pervert? Who? Tell me, Grant. You tell your mommy, Grant. Talk to me. Talk, please. To talk to me, Grant. Honey, you ready? It wasn't as though he and Linda had a new life. It was as though Linda stepped into my life. 
My life kept going with my husband, my traditions, my friends, children. The only difference was Linda was there instead of me. Come on, Dad, you're going to be late. I mean, it's only the biggest night of your life. Okay, okay, I'm coming. You got filming that thing? You want to do this? No. I think the whole thing's a crock anyway. Man, is she hot. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, will you please join us in a round of applause as we welcome the new president of the San Diego County Bar Association, Mr. Dan Broderick who will dance the first dance of this ball with Ms. Linda Kokena. to understand what this engagement business really means. It means you're losing your father. Little by little, he'll pull away from you. And soon, since his new wife is so young, she's going to want children of her own. And that's the point at which he's going to completely turn away from you. Maybe even disown you. It's all right, Grand Honey. All of you will have a mother who loves you. A mother who may be completely alone in this world, but will never abandon you the way your father has. I will always love you. Especially since your father has stopped. Do we have to call our mom? No. No. Hey, your mom is always going to be your mom. I mean, I know... Things have been pretty horrible between us. Yeah, that's the understatement of the year. Look, I wish I could fix everything that's happened, but I can't. Just hope you all know I love you, and Linda loves you, and I want you to know that our being married isn't going to take away from my relationship with you at all. In fact, it might even add a little stability to things. And... Maybe your mom will accept the fact that things are finally over between us. And maybe she'll come back to Earth. I wouldn't count on it. Do you know how to shoot one of these? That's okay. I can recommend a good course. An ex-police officer teaches it. So for a single woman like yourself, I think this is probably your best protection. That's extremely accurate and extremely powerful. I'll take it. Good choice. It is a slug and a fancy tie down. You're too low to kick and you're too wet to step on. <laughs> and you think your slut makes you look good. Well, you're wrong, Danny boy. She makes you look like a horny old man. Are you with the horn now, Dan? Are you making it with the dog meat on the stairs now, Dan? No, huh? Oh, 
Hello? Oh, you are there, you sneaky bastard. Yep, I'm here. And this is stopping tonight, this vulgarity. Vulgarity? What's vulgar is the office slut's voice on the phone that my kids use. Okay, okay, I'm instituting a fine system. A hundred bucks for every obscene word you leave on my answering machine. $250 every time you violate the court order against coming on my property, and $1,000 if you ever take the kids away without getting my permission first. What? It's all coming off the $16,000 a month I'm sending you. So far this month, you're minus $1,500. You pompous bastard! You know what you can do with your fines? And now, parents, families, and honored guests, it gives me great pleasure to present this year's... I remember her sleeping in a dresser drawer next to our bed in this tiny apartment in Boston. I look at her, Susan. She's almost a woman. God, I love her. Miss Celeste Armstrong. Miss Deborah Atkinson. Oh, kids going. Kids going. Catherine Baker. Miss Julie Bentley. Miss Libby Bradshaw. Miss Kate Broderick. Congratulations. I'm gonna make this quick. I don't want to ruin Kate's day, as you seem to be intent on doing. But if you point that thing at me again, you're gonna be photographing the inside of your own throat. Got it? Hi, Bats. Hello, darling. It's always lovely to see you. Miss Elizabeth Caden Hunt. Betty, I'm on your side here, you know that. But you went too far today. Mindy, what? The pictures, Betty. It's your daughter's party, not yours. She doesn't deserve to be humiliated like that. Susan, I have been so humiliated for so long now. It just seems normal to me. That's pretty sad, isn't it? Linda, it's Heather Wilson, the calligrapher. I came by to pick up the guest list, but the maid couldn't find it. Hello, Heather, I'm here. Yeah, I don't know. I left it out for you. I'm gonna have to look around and get back to you. Yeah, I'm really sorry. Thank you. She's right, it's gone. I know, it has it. Ooh. What do you think? Look, Dan, I love you, and, and I feel for you having to live with all of this. But now I'm having to live with it, too. You're right, you're right. I'll change the locks tomorrow. Thank you. And I'd like to report her violation of the restraining order. You can't do that. Why not? Linda, you know the law better than most people. You have no proof that it was Betty. Come on, Dan. Who else? I know, I know, but you can't prove it. Besides which, I don't need her announcing to the press that I'm throwing her in jail again. It's a small town, and I, I can't afford all this insane publicity. Okay, fine. But I still want my wedding list back. Mrs. Broderick, the court demands that you return the guest list. Well, Your Honor, I... I took the list thinking it was, uh, something else of mine. And I, I would gladly have brought it back. In fact, I, I would have brought it with me here today once I realized. But, um, I can't find it. Uh-huh. Well, until you do, I'm releasing Mr. Broderick from his obligation to make alimony payments. What? Perhaps that might refresh your memory. Thank you all very much for coming. Would the clerk call the next case, please? It's not going to make a return my list.
unbelievable. Take it back. Dan, it's her autobiography. It's a 90-page hate letter to you. It's, it's evidence. Of what? That she's flipped out. As if driving her car through your living room wasn't enough. It's proof. Unfortunately, it's also proof that you broke into her house. <sighs> the door was open. Were you invited? The woman put a beach umbrella through your porch window. She destroyed your furniture and your crystal. Look, one person breaking the law in this thing is enough. You gotta take it back, Linda. If nothing else, we at least still have our credibility here. Might be a good idea to keep it that way. All right. I'm sorry. Look, I understand. I do, I just... I'll take it back. Thank you. Loretta. Hi. Hi, Betty Broderick. Well, actually, I, I was fine until I, I found out that you and Fred were going to go to Dan's wedding. How can you do that? I, I mean, I, I looked after your children one summer. For God's sake, if you have any loyalty at all, I beg you not to go. I see. Bull, Loretta. No, bull, I am taking it personally. Betty Broderick. What's this I hear about you going to Dan's wedding? Oh, honey, I'm so glad. Oh, I just hope you're going to get some Susan McDonald is with Betty. She'll call here if Betty tries to pull anything. Great. Here, what's this? Put it on. Larry, I agreed to security guards. Now it looks like the untouchable's out there. She bought a gun. She's told half the world she's going to shoot you. I refuse to lead my life this way. I flat out refuse. I, I, I'm not going to give in to her. It's terrorism. Besides, it makes me look fat. man it falls on me to propose a toast all of us are a bit older than we were the last time around with Dan <laughs> uh, a lot of the old Irish toasts you've all heard before so I don't have any of those I would just like to say to Dan and Linda I mean you have many babies and much happiness <laughs> It was the most depressing day of my life. At home, being guarded, 
I don't know. I guess I just couldn't believe that I could be any more depressed than I already was. But from that day forward, I just didn't ever want to get up again. Ever. crazy is not having a regular relationship with the kid, so maybe if there was a court-approved visitation schedule, she'd leave us alone. That's what she wants. She's a liar, Dan. She's dangerous. Not to the kids. She'd never hurt them. No. But she was a doting mother. She did everything. She sacrificed everything for them. No matter what she's done to them, they love her. Besides which, they see how happy you and I are, and they see how miserable she is, and they want to make her feel better. She's their mom. How could I keep them from doing that? I'll put in a stipulation that if she goes awry in any way, that's the end of it, for good. all this? Do, do, do you know how long I have fought the, the one-man legal giant? He has all the cards, Susan. I, I fight him back, but, but that's what I end up with. Betty, I know what you've been through. I've been there. And I know how much it hurts. And for how long. Time to move on. You have got so much going for you, Betty. You're beautiful. You're smart. You're a teacher. You're cultured. You are funnier than any two comedians I can name. So please, for your own preservation, it's just time to move on. This is you being my friend. Yes. A good one. And I don't want to see you destroy yourself any further. You've got to let him go, Betty, before it's too late. He got to you, didn't he? Betty. I can't believe it. He got to you, too. <sighs> Betty. Take it back. Take it back or get the hell out of my life! Did you hear me? Get out, now!
care what you say. It's my favorite movie of all time. Oh, she had never guess. You've seen it, what, seven times? Well, with you, I've seen it seven times. If it makes you feel any better, I know I've read the book at least twice. Me too. Along with every other teenaged American girl. First dibs on Red Butler. <laughs> well, I wouldn't argue with that. Of course, I can't be Scarlett O'Hara. Why not? I'm Dutch. Frankly, my dear, I'm not giving a damn. <laughs> Thank you. We have to leave now. I think we've had enough. No, I'll let you <laughs> Pictures great. and they're in color. Isn't it great? I've had it. I'm going up. Okay. Okay. Mom, I don't feel too good. Can I sleep in your bed tonight? Yeah, come on up, sweetie. Right. Oh, sorry, honey. Oh. Didn't see it laying there. It's okay. Don't try to break my concentration. No, I wouldn't do that. I would never do that. I would never Please. try to break your concentration. You know that. Never. Never. <laughs> you lost it. I lost it. Hey, look, there's somebody driving this cab. Bert, the cop sent us over. He said the photo way to Happy Land on the bubble. Oh, look at this old bush. By the way, uh, where are you two going on this year now, honeymoon? Where are we going? Look at this. There's the kitty, Ernie. Here, come up here. Powder, Mary. Oh, I feel like a bootlegger's wife. Look! You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna shoot the works. A whole week in New York, a whole week in Bermuda, the highest hotel, the oldest champagne, the richest caviar, and the hottest music of the prettiest wife. Wow, that does it. Then what? Then what, honey? After that, who cares?
I did it. I finally shot the son of a bitch. I don't know. I really went there to shoot myself in front of them. I got nervous. It always makes me mad when, when they say that Dan and Linda were the victims. I mean, the kids were the victims. There were two dead bodies, but there were five victims. I have regrets, but no remorse. I regret that my husband had no character. And my children lost their mother and their home and stability. But I didn't do any legal bullying. I wasn't the one who had an affair. I won't accept the blame for what happened. And I am happy to be locked up in this dark little world where no one can get me.